Uh, today is the uh, seventh annual seaplane fly-in. We have uh, seaplanes flying in from out the Midwest. Uh, there's approximately 21 here today, and uh, it's just turned into a, quite the, the spectacular event over the years. Randy Strebag, uh, who is a resident of the lake, approached the uh, park uh, seven years ago and said, hey, would you guys be interested in holding a fly-in event that's similar to other events they have across the country? And uh, we said, sure. Um, it's been, uh, as you see by the crowd, an event that's grown each year. We probably have oh, anywhere from 1,500 to 2,000 people here today looking at uh, over 21 seaplanes, uh, various sizes and colors. And, you know, these are homemade kits and, and uh, kits that uh, are planes that people have bought and refurbished. And it's just really quite an interesting uh, event. There's no other place where you can in our state park system where you can have this kind of contact with a, a plane and actually see them take off and, and land and then have an opportunity to win or uh, be drawn for a, a seaplane ride over the lakes. Well, this, this date, the, uh, the last uh, weekend in September, is also a traditional weekend. We have the uh, annual hoedown, which is a, uh, a square dancing uh, special event Saturday night in the South Beach parking lot where we'll have about 300 uh, square dancers. So then we follow this the Saturday night up with the uh, seaplane fly-in Sunday morning and it's really just made a wonderful last fall weekend event, big event in September. The uh, inn's full, the campground's full, and the uh, park's full of happy people today. I, th I think for me it's just uh, seeing the kids uh, watch the planes. I mean, and, and, and being in my 40s now, I still have that same kind of excitement watching the planes fly over the inn or when they take off. I mean, that's just the roar of the engine. Uh, the ability of flight is just all kind of, uh, it wraps up and you're kind of thinking to yourself, wow, it'd be neat to be a, a pilot. The association is primarily pilots, but it's also supporters of seaplanes, um, working to open up more lakes and waters for seaplane access in the state of Indiana. One of the reasons for this event is uh, it's been sort of an effort to, to show that seaplanes are compatible with other lake uses and also to kind of share it with the public. It's a, it's a neat opportunity for people to see seaplanes up close. It's something they don't get to do very much. The first uh, heavier than air powered flight was in 1903, that was the Wright brothers. And then in 1910, uh, the first seaplane flight was in France. Uh, so this is actually the 100th anniversary of the seaplane this year. And uh, we were doing a little bit of research on the history of seaplanes in Indiana and we found that as early as either 1913 or 1914 uh, an outfit was planning to put uh, a seaplane training uh, facility on Lake Max and Cucky, which was, uh, you know, so pretty early on this has been a long history of seaplanes in the state of Indiana. I I've been a pilot for about 35 years now. Um, and for most of those I was just a land plane pilot, but in the mid-1990s I got my seaplane rating and just loved it. It's a fantastic way to fly. Um, by definition, you're kind of it's scenic wherever you land. Um, and there's a lot more places that you can go to in a, in a seaplane, particularly an amphibious seaplane like this one, because I can land at any airport, plus I can land at, at literally thousands and thousands of lakes across the country. We have a place up in northern Wisconsin that we go to on a regular basis. We take the plane there. But it's just a wonderful way to get around. It's a lot of fun. It's uh, exciting to land on the water. It's uh, very enjoyable.